So I think the first reason that so many property investors don't get to live their dream life is because they essentially get addicted to doing stuff um, and lose sight of why they're actually doing it. Um, I don't. So that's that's my uh, high level title behind that. I think from from personal experience, it's and then seeing as well what I've seen in others like you in order to start in property you don't just suddenly magically have the time to start it so you end up starting it alongside something else mm -hmm. so our, the irony is you like you want to have more freedom and time but in order to get more freedom and time you have to have a heck of a lot less freedom and time because you take up all your your evenings and weekends with like getting this business off the ground but the problem is you along the way of that happening you kind of get that becomes a new normal like how how you feel, what's happening all the time. Like you just end up being 24 seven is probably an exaggeration, but you're just always on. And I think the main challenge is that how do you go from having this vision of freedom and time, completely throwing freedom and time out the window to make it all happen. And then at some point come back around to actually realizing that. And it's just that addiction and you kind of become always on, always doing stuff. And I think what I've been learning in the last couple of years is from like a from a physiological perspective, like the addiction was also hormones as well. Like we get addicted to the stress and the feelings of it. So it's not just that mindset shift to, OK, actually, I'm, I'm going to have freedom, get some freedom and time now back. That's going to be the priority. But you also have to wean yourself off the addiction to these stress hormones that you've you've created for yourself. Um, so I think being able to let go of the what I would call like doing stuff addiction is is really key to being able to make that dream life a reality. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. And it's funny, I used the word addiction in a, a training that we ran recently on uh, more or less on this subject on, on productivity. Um, and mm -hmm. that, you know, I guess not not so much from a stress point of view, but um, more from the sort of short term, like quick dopamine fixes that you get from like ticking off mundane tasks on a to do list or clearing your inbox, you know, inbox zero, that addiction to like, I need to respond to everything. And you, you end up working on everyone else's priorities. Like if your day is dictated to you by, well, who sent me an email today, then, you know, my, my view is that you're just kind of spending time on other people's agendas, helping them achieve their own goals versus but you know it's, it's easy to do these things it's easy to respond to an email it's easy to get caught up in slack chatting with the team all day it's easy to fall down a rabbit hole on you know instagram dms or ticking off those tasks because you're, you can tell yourself you know oh i'm i'm being busy i'm being productive but you know we kind of uh we, we need to break that short term quick quick fix and think well actually no longer term i need to set my own priorities i need to um, you know, I need to determine what the, the most important tasks are. And, you know, you're, you're right. Like the, I, I find that the important stuff can probably get done in like, you know, a couple hours a day. It's going to vary for everyone, but there's, there's no need for you to be busy all the time as you're growing your business. Like you, mm -hmm. you know, you, there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do to try and minimize that. But yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I see a lot of people doing this. I, I, I see a lot of people doing it because I'm guilty of doing it myself and I have been in the past. So I think that's when, um, you know, it becomes obvious to you. You're like, oh yeah, somebody else is doing this. Wait, hang on a minute. I'm also, I'm doing this myself. I need to break that habit. But um, yeah, addiction, it it's feels really like hard. a powerful word, but I think, I think it sums it up perfectly. And I think it's also like in the process of like getting into property, you kind of do your networks shift. You make new connections, new friends. And I think it's, you meet people who are doing bigger stuff than you, you know, stuff that's maybe you know more exciting than you or more complex than you. And somehow along the way, I don't know, I was definitely guilty of just getting a bit sucked into what everyone else was doing. Um, and, you know, obviously amazing people. And if that's what's right for them, that's great. But it doesn't mean that, that I need to be doing it. And that for me was like, we, we took ourselves into a like real black holes and exaggeration. But like, we were actually really quite focused at first when we first started. And then I started, you know, networking and suddenly just doing single buy to lets just seemed like really not good enough. Uh, and so then we just started trying to do all these other things kind of accidentally you know, our, our post rationalization was we need to like diversify our investments. Like that was, you know, it felt yeah. like an important word. Um, and so we just started doing like, well, I say doing, trying to do 
commercial conversions and developments. Um, we did our first HMO and it just like our, our focus just really spread. And I think, again, it was just like, it, it just felt like we needed to be doing more, more, more to be able to get to the end result and seeing what other people were getting, getting swept up into that when actually our, our whole reason for starting was actually, it was, it was simple. It was like, it was freedom. It wasn't asking for permission to go on holiday and being able to go on holiday as much as we wanted to like that isn't actually that it's not that much of a big ask really but actually we started chasing more and more because that's what other people were doing and i think unless you're really clear and you have to keep coming back to what is it that that i'm doing this for and take inspiration from others but not hold yourself to that same path it's very easy to get swept up yeah, no, absolutely. I kind of, we, we refer to it as like our North Star goal, like the reason why we are doing this and it could be time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom, probably a mix of, of all of them. But if you don't keep that front of mind, you know, like we're so guilty of, you know, you'll, you'll write down your goals and then you'll stick them away in a drawer and you'll forget about them. And you build this business and it's that old, really naff analogy about putting your ladder against the wrong wall, right? You get to the top and you're like, oh shit, this isn't actually where I want to be. Yeah, you're, you're so many people, you know, it's that, um, I, I think it's, you know, I, there, there's an element of shiny penny in there. Like, you know, you get bored and you want to try something else, but I think it's also that, that fear of missing out. Oh, somebody's doing HMOs in Nottingham, that must be the best thing to do. So I need to shift all of my focus to that. Oh, crap, there's an article in YPN magazine about serviced accommodation in Blackpool. We best get up there. Like, you can make all the money you need doing any of these things, right? You don't need to do them all. There's no reason to need to do them all. But I think, you know, like you say, unless you unless you really keep that focus on your you know the the driving force behind it your personal goals it's so easy for that that strategy to get pulled off course or to spread so wide that you end up trying to do a million different things at the same time